Bayami who will not allow his civilian to be a president in Uganda. Thank you. Attorney General. Thank you very much, General Speaker. I appreciate the matters raised by the Honorable MP Semuju. One, I want to say that Article 208, which says UPDF sh shall be subject civilian authority, does not take away a right to have an opinion, freedom of expression, the rights, the rights and freedoms enshrined in Article. No, uh, honor, honorable colleagues. Uh, uh, honorable colleagues, here, here we receive opinions. Whether you accept it or not, whether popular or unpopular, this is where someone should stand up freely. Okay? And speak. So let's give the Attorney General a chance he, he submits, then you can rebuttal. Yes, but now if you don't want him to speak, if you don't want him to express his opinion, and you remember a honorable member has asked me that I should ask government. And I have asked government. This is a chief this is a chief advisor of government. Where else would I go? So please honorable attorney general, complete your point. Chapter four of the constitution is one in which the Bill of Rights is enshrined. And at no time does the Constitution tell us that Article 208 ousts Chapter 4 of the Constitution. Being a military man does not put you outside the ambits of Chapter 4 of the Constitution. You retain the right to express yourself you retain your right to form an opinion. It would be different. It would be different if he was ferrying ballot papers and voter materials for a particular party. And even then, if he has to do it for security purposes under the circumstances, each case would be adjudged based on its facts. I beg to submit. Thank you. Since we, since we allowed uh, the Attorney General, we can also hear from the Shadow Attorney General. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I, all along, I thought I, I went to the same law school with my Iran friend until today. Well, I'm not saying that I'm disappointed because he has expressed his opinion, but I think it is it is vulgarizing a very important matter which one of us has raised. That a serving military officer who is at the helm of the UPDF currently comes up and makes statements which not only contravene Article 208 of the Constitution, but also the UPDF Act itself. And an attorney general comes and defends that kind of conduct as part of the freedoms of expression and opinion, well knowing that some freedoms are subject to the law. Yeah, just uh, sorry for interruption, Honorable Nwagaba. Some of us, you know, are not in social media and all that. Where are these statements? Because, because uh, you, uh, there are things being uh, referred to. No, no, because it seems there are statements which some people have read.
some of us have not read. I, ju I just, uh, if, if one could, could lay it on the table, it would help some of us. Okay? Yes. No, I, I'm just asking honestly. Because, because if we take it that everyone is on social media waiting for statements and all that. Okay? So if we can lay on table, when I was sorry, you want to lay your phone on table? Yeah, yes, when I was speaker. I want, I want to lay <laughs> my, my, my phone, which has the Twitter official accounts of the CDF. Please lay it. Uh, describe your phone and lay <laughs> but, but, but just when I was saying, when I said the one story. Thank you, right honorable speaker. You know, under the same constitution, a person is innocent until he pleads guilty or until he is uh, found to be guilty. When you passed over the mantle to the executive and the executive owned up as a fact but defended on the law, I was relieved. The executive, which you were asking to respond I had expected them to say we shall investigate but because they knew they did not undertake to investigate <laughs> but owing to the seriousness of this matter Mr. Speaker I thought with your guidance that the right way the right way of dealing with this would be to refer the matter to an investigation irrespective of who is involved because it is about our life it is about the safety of everybody in this country it is a matter that should be investigated I went to the same law school not only law school but same high school with the Honorable Attorney General Kafuzi I am not disappointed because one core thing we were taught is to express the opinion and the Supreme Court of this land has ruled in Andrew Mwenda and uh, Charles Onyango both versus Attorney General that a person has the right to express even a wrong opinion <laughs> I was going to say outside Parliament I say even a stupid opinion but fearing you where you are seated Mr. Speaker I, ought, I opted to refrain. My appeal to you, sir, and to this house, for the safety of this country and everybody, is subject this one investigation so that we have my brother, Kainerugaba, to also say I said, I did not say, I was not in my usual moods or something else. So we give him a right to defend himself. Thank you. I thank you. Now, let, let me first read on that. Um, honorable colleagues, the UPDF has its code of conduct, has its disciplinary procedures. If any member of the UPDF violates their code of conduct, they are subjected to their disciplinary. I have seen generals going there. I have seen senior officers going there. So I don't want parliament to turn itself into an investigative body where before the institution can utilize its own mechanisms in case there was a problem. In case there was a problem. So really, I, I, I am not going to be referring this matter to a committee for investigation. We have a lot of business to handle here. Let us leave institutions to handle theirs. But when I will conclude, Q, right on the speaker, as I conclude. Uh, uh, information, okay. Mr. Speaker, sir, I, want, I would like to give information to my shadow attorney general. I was the shadow minister responsible for defense and veteran affairs in this parliament and the Ministry of Defense fully constituted came and appeared before our committee the Honorable Vincent Sempija who was the minister headed that uh, 
that delegation supported by the state minister then who is now the minister honorable both of both and then the cdf then honorable mbadi who is here they came i put this question to them i told them that we have a serving military officer who appears to be above the law and is contradicting an act of parliament when i began to ask the question the honorable sempija immediately <laughs> felt some cold and rushed out of the committee meeting here in parliament the honorable or both of both immediately took a phone call and said i'm coming back literally running away the CTF who had the command and i challenged him and the colleagues who sit on the committee was there he said as the army commander can't you issue orders the CDF but he said do not cause me trouble <laughs> and said please leave me alone so the question we are dealing with so why does someone you want to cause us trouble <laughs> If that's the issue. <laughs> so, so, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> so, first, I want to give that information. But now, Mr. Speaker, you also see that the trouble wants to come to you. No, no. But the I, issue I, I now, hope I was someone who has had. Yeah, you've given, you've given him good advice. <laughs> yes, but beyond that, Mr. Speaker. In the act, there are provisions for the minister to make regulations. And there are so many regulations that have been made. The last one that I had and I saw the president launching it was called the UPDF establishment. By law, every regulation made by the minister must come before this parliament so that we can scrutinize to see whether they conform to the spirit and letter of the law that we have made here. That act has not come. But I saw the president and the people who briefly explained say the commander in chief who is given powers by the constitution and the act has now delegated some powers as a commander in chief to somebody else. That is extremely contradictory to what we have here. Because as you know, the commander in chief is protected, he has immunity and it is he. I therefore want to request that you prevail over the Ministry of Defense to bring that act here that uh, regulation, the UPDF establishment, so that we can then interrogate the powers that the, uh, the policy, the regulation has given to the CDF. He may be acting because the powers are provided in that. So that we can nullify it. Otherwise, one day we'll wake up and then you'll find that there is no government elected by the people and someone is prevailing over a government which is unconstitutional. It's a danger that we should take care of. That's the information I'm giving. Attorney General specifically on that issue. Just Attorney General specifically on that issue of UPDF establishment. Right Honorable Speaker, I will send it to Dur Jonathan. The Honorable, my Honorable colleague. Yes, there are regulations made. And uh, if you are concerned that they have not been tabled in Parliament for purposes of Peruso, the Ministry of Defence can do that because it is well within the right of Parliament. Be that as it may, my senior colleagues, uh, the Shadow Attorney General, and uh, my former head boy, the Honourable. Segona can not legally point to any clause in the constitution that ousts anyone's right to freedom of conscience, expression, and having an opinion. Now, unless if you are telling us that the constitution has a conflict within itself which no court has made a pronouncement on the status quo remains i beg it submit on a point of order, Mr. Uh, this matter closed yes uh, how how have you closed it is how it, is, is how it has been closed
because I, I pronounce myself yeah, yeah. I, I pronounce myself twice number one that this is a matter if it violates any law to do with the UPDF it has its disciplinary procedures it will handle number two the official spokesperson of government is here okay official spokesperson is this a government statement an official statement of government <laughs> so it is, it is now open uh, thank you very much right honorable speaker thank you very much right honorable speaker and thank you honorable Semuju, for raising the issue in the government there is a formal way government officers communicate for that to be an official communication of government. For instance, I speak for government, but I cannot just be at a party and we are conversing, and then you take my conversation to be government policy and so forth. So what General Mohoz Kinerogawa commented was just a casual comment, which, which we do not take. Yes, there is a formal way there is a formal way through which UPDF communicates. Uh, point of order, Honorable Seungu. Yeah. With due respect to the Minister of Information, Mr. Speaker, sir, on the front bench here, the front bench, it's only one person who is appointed the minister basing on his qualification. That's the Attorney General. And the, the reason why it's given that kind of attention is because it's going to be a legal advice of government. Here we are. You, Mr. Speaker, you have stated already that you cannot make a determination in this house because it has its own administrative structure. Now, we are having a Minister of Information still confirming that same illegality, mischief, that when you say that you have a method of communication as government, and one of your government officials goes out of the method of communication, it becomes, in, it becomes illegal. So, we have seen sons of first presidents. Obote's son is here. Your point of order, order, order. son is here. So, the point of order I'm raising, is it in order, Mr. Speaker, for the Minister of Information, who is on the floor, who could come in to give a better remedy that can change and solve the mischief we are seeing to continue giving it more appetizers on the floor of parliament. We have seen many members of parliament who have praised the government in Museveni and his son, and they have lost here. You know what's happening to a tribu Katoto? He was ever shouting here, singing every song about NRM. Well, he looks, he's looking for Museveni, he can't get him. Gandhi asked Katoto at him. Oh, no, no, so, order. he's in order Thank you. to continue Thank you. misbehaving because of the things Thank you. It's only God. Thank you. Now, uh, uh, on, on our colleagues, I guided on this matter, okay? Uh, I guided on this matter. Uh, to Jen of Piero, you. The way. Uh, on a minister, I will allow you to conclude. Thank you. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. I would uh, just request you, Right Honorable Speaker, that you use your powers and request or ask Honorable Semuju to read the message. Because he said that this message is on the official account of General Muhozika in Rugaba. Let him read the message because you cannot challenge something that is not there. The Twitter, the Twitter message that they are talking about have checked on the account of General Mosca in Rugab and it is not there. So why should we really waste our time on something that is not on the account of General Mosca in Rugab? Now, uh, honorable colleagues, these are administrative issues for the UPDF. Let's close it from here. Let's close it from here. Honorable uh, Fidra. Huh? Yes, Honorable Dun. Point of privilege. Right, Honorable Speaker, I'm rising on a point of privilege. 
as a member of parliament and parliament as an institution we have in support of our work people who are recruited to give the best technical support that they have and they can to this parliament to function properly that includes supporting me as a member of parliament whether on research or any guidance that is required i am concerned and deeply as such by i'm going to use about four words to describe and i request that members bear with me the law the demotivation among the staff within parliament the incompetence